Good morning, good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. The Lord is great. He's greatly to be praised. Greatly to be honored and adored. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. It is Monday, May 13th. Hope everybody enjoyed their Mother's Day on yesterday. I think this might be a little loud. Good morning. Come on in the room. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and magnify him for he is powerful and he is mighty. Good morning to all of you. Come on in the room. Come on and bless him. Come on. Yes, today he gives us brand new mercies. Yes, brand new mercies he gives us. Yes, the Bible says great is his compassion toward every last one of us. Good morning to all of you that are coming in the room. It is time for us to bless the Lord and time for us to magnify him because he continues, yes, to shower his blessings upon us. Good morning to you. Sister Miller, so good to see you this morning. Sister Cynthia, so good to see you this morning. That's right. Come on in the room. Let us bless the Lord. Let us let the Lord know how much we love and appreciate him for all the wonderful things that he has done on our behalf. Yes, I'm going to go before the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to get right into what it is that he has for us so that everybody can get on their way this morning. Father God, we just thank you. We bless you, oh God, for you are strong, God. We bless you, for you are mighty. We bless you, Lord God, for you are powerful, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God, for continuing to bless us and do the things, God, that you've continued to do in our lives, God. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see this brand new day that you've given us and for giving us, God, yet another opportunity and another chance to be a part of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, that even though the enemy comes in like a flood, even though yesterday, Lord God, may have been challenging for us, may have been challenging, God, in the lives that we we um, shared, God, even on Mother's Day. It could have been challenging. The Lord kind of tried to throw some things in our way, God, but we thank you that the, the Spirit of the Lord lifted up a standard against him, and we thank you that we knew the Word of God, that we were able to share that Word, oh God, and we were able, God, to say to the enemy that he could not throw us off track, and he could not have our children, he could not have our loved ones. We thank you for the time that we spent, God, with our loved ones. We thank you that we were able to share some great time with them and great food, great, great fellowship, great fun and laughter, oh God. But Lord God, we recognize that even though yesterday was a day that we created to be a day of celebration of mothers, we know that every day, Lord God, is a day that we ought to celebrate one another. So thank you for the time, Lord, that we have to celebrate one another. But most of all, thank you for the time that we have to celebrate you. And Lord God, even as we celebrate you in this time, Lord, that we, God, will share in these few minutes, oh God, that we talk about you, talk about the things that you love, talk about the things, Lord God, that make us, God, who we are. Lord God, we pray that you will engraft this little word to our hearts, oh God, that we may be changed. And Lord God, I pray, God, even for those that all are all over, not only in this region, but in regions, God, all over this country, God, that you will bless our families, God, heal us, God, bring us closer together. God, give us, God, a word in our mouth, oh Lord God, that we will, God, uh, allow, God, the tricks of the enemies, God, the traps, God, the curses, God, God, to be reversed, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that our families, God, will be able to unify. God, together against the, the uh, tricks of the enemy, oh God, that we'll be able to progress in you, move forward, God, in you. And we thank you, God, for everything that you have for us. It is for us, God, and we, God, will advance in that. We give your name praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and bless the Lord. Listen, people of God, the Lord is great. He continues to be great. Good morning to all of you. Brother George, good morning. Sister Barbara, Sister Norris, so good to see you this morning. God bless you. Yes, Sister Glenda, Sister Cynthia, good morning to you. Sister Terry, so God bless you. Sister Sherry, so good to see all of you this morning. Again, once again, I hope that all of you enjoyed your Mother's Day. You had a good time on Mother's Day yesterday. And even for those of you that are not mothers, I want to say good, happy Mother's Day to you as well. Because I know that even though we may not be biological mothers, somebody is looking up to you. Listen, I want to tell this little short story and I want to get into what the Word of God says. As I was thinking about yesterday, we sang a song. Yeah, it was just, just talking about, you know, the goodness of God. And um, you know, the song where it just goes on to tell, to speak to the Lord in regard to the fact that we could never repay God for all of the things that God has done. And the song just says, you know, Lord, you are just so good. Just so good. It's so very good to us. And 
You're just so good and just you just open doors and you just bless us so much and you heal us, God. And as I thought about that, I just thought about that song all night long about how good God is. And, and you know, it just seems like there are things that we do and the Lord still continues to bless us. And just I just thought about that thing. We just could never pay, repay God for all the wonderful things that he does. And as I thought about that thing, you know, I have a policy here in my family. I don't know about anybody else, but I have a policy here in my family. that my children, you know, even when they were younger, they were always asking me to borrow money. You know, borrow, they wanted to borrow. Mom, can I borrow $10 or can I borrow $25? And I borrow, you know, $5. And I'm thinking, you know, I would say to them, I don't loan money to people that can't pay me back. They didn't have no job. So how would they even pay me back? I don't know about anybody else. And I don't know how you all felt about that. And I would say to them, I don't loan money to people that can't pay me back. You know, that was, that was my policy with my children. I'm not loaning you any money because you can't pay me back. So what would be the point of me loaning you money? And I know that there would be no way for me to get it back. I, you, can't, you can't repay me. You can't repay me. <laughs> Glory to God. So you can't get it from me. And as I grew, you know, in that, I think about the things of God. And I think about God, how God doesn't do us like that. It, it, let me just finish that story because you like, Pastor, you did that to your children? Yeah, I did. But eventually I would say to them, I would give it to them because I would know that there would be no way that they could pay me back. So I'm not going to loan you the money. I will give it to you because I know that you can't repay me. You can't repay because you can't, there is no way that you could give it back. Good morning, you, Sister Sheila. Sister Donna, good morning, you, Sister Deborah. And I thought about that even from the standpoint when I began to think about that song, that we can never repay God. There is nothing that we have that we can give God back for all of the things that he's done. You know, I go back to my children. You can't, you can't give me enough back. You can't even, you don't even have it to give. People of God, God has given us so much love. God has given us so much grace. We can give God thanks and we can thank him. But the debt that we owe to God, we can never fully repay that back to him. Just think about all the things. Think about how many times the Lord woke us up in the morning. Can you count the number of days? Can I count the number of days over my 61 years of life that the Lord touched me and woke me up can we imagine the depth of God's love and, and God's grace or as I think about Ephesians chapter 2 the Bible says but because of his grace his great love for us oh that's Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5 it's because of his great love for us God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace that we have been saved. People of God, God's love and his grace is beyond measure. And despite our sins, despite what we have done, despite our failures, he offers us salvation freely out of his great love for us. Oh, he loves us so much. Oh, I can't. We can never repay him. Oh, we can never repay him. And that's a debt, people of God, because of that love. We can never repay. But we can respond. We can respond with, with gratitude and, and with obedience. And even as I go back to my little story about my children wanting to borrow money. You can't repay because you don't have a job. But you can respond. People of God, we can't repay the debt that we owe to God. But we can respond to him. We can respond with thanks. We can respond with our gratitude. We can respond with our obedience to God. 
letting him know how much we appreciate God. I could never repay you for waking me up every single morning. I could never repay you for how you bless me. I could never repay you, Lord, for the salvation that I'm receiving. I could never repay you, Lord God, for how, Lord, you put me in positions. I could never repay you, Lord God, for the prosperity that you bring our way. But, Lord, I can respond. For I recognize that there is a price for our redemption. And that price, Lord God, I found it in 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, glory to God. Verses 18 and 19 where it says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors. But it was with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. People of God, that price of our redemption, it was precious and it was paid by Jesus through his death, through his suffering on the cross. Oh, his sacrifice was the ultimate payment for our sins. We can never... We can never repay you, Lord. We can never repay him for that. And because we recognize that we could never repay him for that. That should, somebody said it earlier. That should create a spirit of humility and fill us with gratitude. Because that's a debt we can never repay. And our response should be a life of gratitude a life of service Romans 12 we know it 1 and 2 it says I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God you know some translations say in view of God's mercy in light of the mercy that God has given to us that we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice holy Oh, God, and pleasing to God. This is our true and proper worship. This is what we just ought to do. This is our reasonable service, some translations say. And then the word goes on to say, do not be conformed to the to this world, to the patterns of this world. Don't do what the world does. Don't, don't fashion yourself after what the world does. You know, I don't care what's happening. I don't care what is being created in the world today. And we see there are many different things that are being changed in our lives, changed in the world. Don't fashion yourself after that. Resist the way the world is going. Stand up and be different. Stand up and show that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stand up and show that you are that peculiar person. Stand up and show that you are unique. So instead of being conformed to the way of the world, the patterns of the world, doing it the world's way, the Bible says you be transformed, be changed by the renewing of your mind. Allow your mind to be shaped. It says then you will prove, you will be able to test it. You will be able, my God, to prove what God's will is. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will for your life. Not that we want God to conform to our will. But that we will step into the will of God and do what is pleasing in His sight. People of God, in in response to the mercy that God has given to us. In response to God still showering His blessings upon us. We are called to live a life of gratitude and a life of worship, a life of service, giving ourselves, oh my God, giving ourselves to him. All the songwriter says, I give myself to you so you can use me. I give myself to you in service to you, oh God. Ah, I feel Jesus because it's our gratitude that leads us to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice 
that we are dedicated to the service of God and being obedient to his will. Oh, glory to God. You all remember the story. Yeah. When Mary anointed the feet of Jesus with the expensive perfume in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, and they wondered why are you wasting, they said, why are you wasting this oil on Jesus' feet? She poured the oil out of her alabaster box. And she only wanted to give him something in response to what he had given to her. Ah, my God. She only wanted to do something in response to what the Lord had done for her. And just that act of pouring out that expensive oil that high from the alabaster box on Jesus' feet, that, my God, was an act of just extravagant love and gratitude. People, what are we doing to show the Lord our extravagant love and gratitude? Because she understood the depth of the debt to the Lord and responded with a sacrificial gesture. Do we understand the, do the depth of of the debt that we owe that we can never repay. But people of God, we can respond. We can never repay it. But like Mary, we should be willing to give our best to the Lord. Just out of gratitude and thanksgiving for all that he has done for us. Just even in these few hours or hour that you've been up this morning or minutes, he's done so much for you. He's done so much for me. Oh, he's shown me just a little bit more of why I should be thankful. He's shown me just a little bit more of how I can show him gratitude for the depth of the debt that I owe. Oh, my God. It's by grace that I'm saved, not by works, nothing that I've done, nothing that I will do. People have got a, our eternal debt of gratitude to him. That ought to mean something to us this morning. Yeah, that was my policy. Don't loan anybody anything that they can't pay you back. But I freely give because I don't expect anything back in return. Yeah. I don't expect it back in return because I understand that my children couldn't pay it back. The debt would have been too great for them. And just like the Lord, He understands that the debt is too great for us. But our eternal grace, Psalms 116, 1, 12 through 13, it says this, what shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness? <laughs> what shall I give for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and I will call on the name of the Lord. We can never, people of God, never fully repay the Lord for all of his goodness to us. But we can lift up the cup of salvation and we can call upon his name. The Bible says, lift up the name of Jesus and he will draw all men unto himself. I can lift up his name. I can let somebody know that Jesus lives and he lives forevermore in my life. I can respond to what he's done. I can't repay him. Oh, glory to God. But I can respond to what he's done. Our gratitude, people of God. Oh, man. It should be an ongoing attitude that we recognize that everything we have and whoever we are, it comes from God and that we owe him everything. We owe him everything, but we can't repay Oh, but we owe him everything. 
people of God. Absolutely everything. And so as I think about, the Lord says, I'm going to give this to you. I'm not loaning you salvation. I'm not lending you grace. Oh, I'm not lending you mercy. I'm not lending you eternal life. He said, but I freely give because I know that you cannot repay. You cannot repay. But our response, people of God, oh, glory to God, our response, because the price was far too great, our response ought to be an ongoing life of gratitude, an ongoing life of service. And let Mary be our example that through sacrifice she gave the very best showing of love and gratitude that she could. She gave the very best that she had to lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Let us, as we go about our day, not only today, but as we go about our daily walk in the presence of men and women, in the presence of those that know and that don't know God, let us lift up the cup of salvation. Call on the name of the Lord. Respond with thanksgiving and obedience in regard to all that the Lord has done for us. Oh, glory to God. Because we can never repay that everything that we have, everything that we are, everything he created us to be now and into the future. Everything, Lord, we owe you all. Oh, my God. And all to him, all to him we owe. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this word, oh Lord God. We thank you, God, for helping us to recognize that you've given us so much. And everything that we have, oh God, it is because of you. And Lord, because of that, we give your name praise, God. Because of that, we lift the name Jesus. We say, our Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for being who you are in our lives. We lift up the name of God, Lord, because it is in you, God, that we move and we live, God, and we have our being, oh God. And so, God, we just pray right now, Lord God, that you, God, allow our lives, God, to reflect, Lord God, thanksgiving and, and praise, God, and obedience, oh God, and all of those things, oh God, that let the world know that we love and appreciate you, God, for what you've done in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping our families, oh God, and thank you, oh God. For God, for even reconciling, God, with the God that there was a breach. We thank you, Lord God, even now, God, for how you're saving our children. Yes, God. For all of the things, oh God, that we knew that we could not do, God, but we put our hands in it and we messed it up. We pray, oh Lord God, you'll continue to bless us, oh God. God, go through the hospitals, oh God, right now. God, touch, heal. Lord God, deliver. God, deliver those that are sin sick, oh God. God, go into the courtrooms now. God, there's somebody, God, that needs you to plead their case in the name of Jesus, oh God. Someone, God, has been falsely accused, oh God. Someone, oh God, yes. Maybe of their own doing, but God, something, the enemy, God, is trying to destroy them, oh God. I pray that you will intervene now in the name of Jesus. Then, Lord God, I pray that you will touch every illness, oh God, every manner of sickness and disease. Because we know, God, that the Bible lets us know that you are able to heal it. There is nothing that is too hard for you, Lord God. And we thank you, God, that we believe it. That we believe, God, that you, God, can heal every manner of sickness. And so, God, right now, we speak, Lord God, to glaucoma in the name of Jesus. We speak to diabetes. We speak, Lord God, to lupus. We speak to multiple sclerosis, God. We speak to cancer now, God. We cause it to dry up in the name of Jesus, oh God. We speak, Lord God, to bone disease. We speak, Lord God, to blood diseases. We speak, my God, to hyper pretension in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, Lord God, yes, God, that you will come in, God, to bring God bodies back into divine order, 
according to your will, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, yes, that you are moving and abounding in the lives of the people, oh God, because they believe, God, you to do a miracle in their life. Thank you, Lord God, for being miracle worker in their life right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. And by faith, oh God, we believe, God, that healing shall come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree it, I declare it now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that healing, oh God, will come forth now in the name of Jesus, oh God. I speak, God, over those that are listening right now in the name of, oh my God, yeah, tumors, oh God, yes, are decreasing now in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, even that tumor in that brain, oh God, is decreasing in the name of Jesus, oh God. Sciatica, God, yes, God, the tumor in the back, oh God, it is not there anymore. I thank you, Lord God, for the praise report, even in the name of Jesus, oh God, we bless you, oh God, yes, oh my God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you're moving, God, by your spirit in the name of Jesus, oh God, we bless your name, oh God, yes, you better call it out, oh, I bless you, oh God, for what you're doing, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in families, oh God, in churches, oh God, in the name of Jesus, I call forth churches, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, you will send forth a harvest into the churches, oh God, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, oh God, yes, God, there are many, God, people, oh God, who need to be in places, oh God, where they can learn, God, and hear from you, oh God, they are sitting at home. I call them out in the name of Jesus. Oh, I call them out, God, to come, God, and sit, God, in houses of worship, oh God. I call them, oh God, it out to sit, God, in Kingdom Life Christian Cathedral. I call them out to sit, God, in Kingdom Christian Center. I call them out to sit in Sweet Home. I call them out to sit in New Horizons. I call them out, my God, to sit in Pilgrim. I call them out, oh God, to sit by greater friendship. I call them out to sit, my God, in Greater St. John. I call them out to sit in Mount Carmel. I call them out, oh my God, to sit, my God, in our churches, my God, in this city and in this region, oh God. I call them out, glory to God, to sit, my God, in the name of Jesus, in, oh my God, hell, glory to God, in fam. I call them out to sit, my God, in churches all over, in greater Mount Calvary. I call them out in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, to sit in churches, oh God. They will feel, my God, the benches, feel the pews, oh God. I call forth leadership uh, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I call forth, my God, the evangelists. I call forth the pe preachers. I call forth the pastors, the teachers. I call forth, my God, the bishops. I call forth, my God, the evangelists, my God, to go out, to go forth, to, to go into the hedges and the byways, oh God, and speak a word, to lift up the cup of salvation and call, my God, the name of Jesus, that men and women, my God, will understand who you are, and my God, and bring them into the churches, my God, wherever they may be. I call them forth in the name of Jesus, God, God, that your word and your name, my God, may be spoken, my God, in the mouths of the people, my God, in their homes and at the dinner tables, oh God, wherever it is that they may go. Lord God, that your word, my God, will bring life and light, my God, and cut through, my God, the words of the enemy, oh God, that we will be transformed, God, and not conform to the things of this world. Lord God, I thank you that you're doing a great work now in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, and it's because of the words that we're speaking, oh God, that life shall come forth in the name of Jesus, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and bless the Lord. Amen, people of God. Listen, the Lord is great. The Lord is greatly to be praised. He is greatly to be honored and adored. Listen, it is up to us right now, people of God, to allow the word of the Lord to be in our lips. Call the name of the Lord. Respond to what it is that the Lord has done to us. We can't repay him, but we can respond. Respond with gratitude, respond with obedience, and call on the name of the Lord. I love you so much with the love of Jesus. You have a wonderful day. You go in peace.